Hey, what's up, Internet? How's it going? It's Dan here from Cryo Noir. Just continuing on this dev series. I think we're on to uh, episode 8 now, so it's going pretty well. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to uh, give a big shout out, first of all, to Benjamin from Heartbeat Studios. Um, because he sort of liked and shared my, my previous video, uh, that's kind of given it three times as many views as all of my other videos so that's a that's a real big help thanks a lot ben um and hopefully you, you like my uh, my content going forward so uh, you're going to be featured a lot in it because like you're the person that i've been uh, been sort of learning from the most and i'd also like to put a uh, a point out to patrick Z uh finnegini or whatever there'll be a link below um finnegini Patrick, uh, Patrick Finnegini. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a, a big shout out to this guy. He's the uh, he's my first legitimate s subscriber that I don't know or anything like that. Uh, so why don't you head over to his channel, show him some love. He's got some uh, good Let's Play series. I uh, particularly like the, uh, the Star Wars one that he did for Old Republic, and he's also making his own game as well, which looks pretty uh, pretty intense as well. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, and with that, we'll uh, get on with the episode. Oh, one more thing, uh, as always, uh, there'll be a link in the description below, so if you want to do the tutorial for yourself, just head on to YoYo Games' website and you'll be able to get Game Maker Studios for free, and then head straight over to uh, Benjamin's uh, YouTube channel, and you'll be able to do the tutorial from there, okay? When we left Lunk, he was able to potter around the world in all directions, but not much else. It was time to rectify that and add some gameplay to this game. And what's more indicative than an 8-bit RPG than hitting stuff with swords? Benjamin provided a set of sprites for the attack animation in all four directions, and we got to work implementing them into the game. And when I say we, I mean Benjamin did it and I followed along. We created a new state called the attack state, and wrote some code so that game makers would switch between the walking and the attack animations in the correct way. If Lunk was facing up, it would use the up animation. If he was facing down, it would switch to the down animation. If he was facing left, then you get the idea. Once the animation was called, he would then spawn a damage object with a circular sprite. This sprite would set the area of effect of the sword, would be invisible to the player, making it look as though the sword was damaging the enemies. But it wasn't really. Trixie Game Designers. This invisible object would reduce the enemy's hit points, create a knockback effect to make it look as though the enemy was being stunned, and then destroy itself after one frame. Instance destroy! The knockback effect was coded as a collision with a lifeform parent object, which could in turn be inherited by all other lifeforms in the game. This meant all future enemy types, and Lunk himself could get knocked back when hurt. The lifeform parent also now held most of Lunk's collision data and basic constants, like don't spin endlessly when moving and, and die when you have no health. We then created a dash state, so the players could dodge enemies and get out of trouble, like Geralt out of Witcher 3, uh, only with brown hair. This code effectively took the direction Link was walking in and times his speed by 4. We then put a timer on this effect so that you would only be able to run for a short time and then it would return back to the regular move state. To make it look like Lunk was the Flash, we created a duplicate image of him as he moved through the dash state. Each one would fade with every frame of the game until it disappeared. This would give the illusion that it was moving faster than your eyes could see. Now that we have both an attack state and a dash state, it was just a case of linking those two new states to both the keyboard mapping and the joypad and we were done. Now that Lunk could hit things and dodge things, it only seemed fitting that we should give him something to hit and dodge. Benjamin again provided more sprites for a slime creature and I went about putting eyes on them because that's what they look like in Grain Wars. He then showed me how to get them to inherit from the lifeform parent and also how to chase Lunk. I added a handful of them to the world and that was that. We had gone from a little guy pottering around some walls into a field to running and slicing little green blobs until they went away. It's only when I try and write this down and explain it to people that I realise just how mental bananas it all is. Creating damage objects that were invisible and then them destroy themselves, multiple copies of the same character that fade away to make it look like a character is in dashing, and a lifeform parent object, a progenitor to all life that holds within itself the DNA of how all of its offspring will interact with the world. It's no wonder people who write code for games and, and level designers love the work so much. You are god of a tiny little ecosystem that you shape to your will without any thought about how your choices affect the recipients of your musings. 
Lunk could have run 5 times, 10 times, even 20 times as fast and as long as he normally does. And all it would have taken for me is to add another digit. Lunk would have been a demigod among all digital men. But 4 times looks about right and you always have to think about the other gods that are going to be playing with the world you created. Next up it was time to give these enemies some smarts. We gave them an idle state and taught them to check if Lunk was in the area. If he wasn't in sight, they would wander around as they had nothing else much to do. But if they saw him, they would chase him down until either they caught him or he got away. And the getting away part was quite easy due to Lunk's endless dash ability and his new relearned ability to clip through walls. The natural progression for an RPG, once the basic mechanics are in place, is to add a natural progression system. Uh, by which I, I mean a, a leveling system. We added some stats for Lunk, for his stamina, maximum health, and what level he was. We then wrote some code so it would be displayed on the screen. We added an enemy stall state so that the enemies would be able to hit the player once and then would pause for a second rather than continuing on into the player draining all of their health in one encounter. Once the player and the slime object collided, the slime would then create a damage object which would then damage the player and reduce his hit points. The stamina and XP system would require some more code later, but we now had a game where the player could be chased by the enemies and could fight them to the death. For the leveling system, Benjamin had come up with a similar system to Fable, where dead enemies would drop like an XP orb which would then be collected by the player to gain XP. We created a little white circle for the orbs and added a destroy event to the enemy. Once the enemy died, they would then be replaced with a little white ball for the player to collect. We then moved Lunk's stats out of the player object and into a player stats object. This way we could make them persistent throughout the game and not be affected by Lunk going into other rooms and losing his progress. We then added some codes so the XP orb is collected and the player's XP is increased by 1. If the XP then became greater than the maximum XP variable, the player's level would increase by 1. Every time this happened, the maximum XP value would double, meaning you would need more and more XP each time to level up, and the player's stamina and attack damage was also increased. And that should just about work. Another player test, and we're on to the next section. Okay, here we go, right? Oh, we're moving about. All right, yeah, we can dash through. Oh, there we are. Health's coming down if we hit enemies. That's that's okay. And then, yeah, yeah, killing. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, unable to find it. Oh, yeah. What do you want to the name? Identify. Uh, Gmail object. Oh, watch it. Damn it. Collision event. One point left. Okay, what's, what's this all about? Okay, let's just move this out over here, get this out of the way, and let's have a look at the object damage. So it's a collision with the player objects, and let's have a look. Just identify it. It's in the step event. There we are. Uh, depth in the line is script execute. I won't make any problems. Script execute state. Uh, check for depth. Uh, okay. Uh, what I mean, that all looks looks okay. Okay, let's try. Let's try this again, right? Okay, we're running around here. The sword swipe be working, right? Okay, yeah, we can hit them and they bounce back. That's fine. Okay, that's all fine. And they're dropping the orbs as well, which is good. There we go. So we collected a couple of orbs. Let's see. And uh, we're doing that. And yeah, they're all moving. We're getting hit back as well. There we go. We've leveled up as well. Oh, look, we've gained stamina. We've also gained health as well. So that's all working perfectly fine. Hmm. Okay, I wonder what that was. I mean, I think it was an issue. I might have to do some digging, but I think it was probably okay. That was probably okay. Yeah, I mean, everything seems to be working out all right. I mean, they're a little glitchy and moving around and stuff, but you know. Okay, I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we're getting health points out. Leveled up again. Crap! 